Hey everyone, welcome back to Me and MS. My name is Michael. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, if you're new here, I suspect some of you may be with the, the topic of today's video. I started this uh, YouTube series to you know, detail my life with living with multiple sclerosis for 19 years. Uh, you know, I started, uh, I was diagnosed when I was 18, uh, uh, and I've been through, uh, you know, all the stages uh, that they say you will up until this point, relapsing and remitting, um, and I've seen my ability uh, slowly decline over the years. Um, but you know, it's, we all, I always say everyone has their something, and uh, yeah, I'm, you know, just here to hopefully help uh, you learn something about the disease, uh, if you are, newly diagnosed and not or have a loved one with MS. So I uh, just really want to give you some insight to uh, what's, you know, my story is uh, living with it. But yeah, I wanted to follow up pretty quickly from my last episode of, of detailing my story and especially expound upon my experience having HSCT, amniopathic stem cell treatment uh, for MS, which is a newer treatment that's gotten a lot of uh, buzz and talked about the last uh, about 10 years or so. So yeah, I was able to experience HSCT uh, in May of 2018. I chose, after uh, some research on the topic for several months, I chose to go with Clinica Ruiz. Uh, they are a Mexican clinic uh, with locations both in Puebla, Mexico, which is uh, I think about two hours outside of Mexico City, and uh, Monterey, Mexico, which is where I was. How the whole process started, I applied online, uh, they had a pretty easy to use application process, uh, an interview process, and uh, did all of the research with them, made sure they made sure I was comfortable, I made sure I was comfortable with them, uh, and uh, set it up from there. To go into uh, exactly what the treatment entailed, um, I'll try to keep it concise, but also give you enough insight to how everything went give you an overview of the process of HSCT. It's been used for patients with leukemia and lymphoma uh, since the 90s, I believe. Uh, and it's basically the idea is to reset your immune system. So with the, the case of MS, the idea was that your immune system would forget that it had MS in your body, would stop attacking uh, your, yourself. Uh, so how the process works is you get a series of shots called filgrastum to, make, to get stem cells moving in your bloodstream, uh, then once that is all, uh, once you get a certain level uh, and you've been deemed ready for, uh, for extraction, uh, it's a, about, a, it was about a six hour process or so, I believe, uh, where you go into the hospital, they stick one needle in your right arm and your blood comes out, goes through this crazy uh, medical device where it filters out, literally filters out the stem cells um, and puts them in a vial. And then the blood continues out the other side and back into your other arm. So it's uh, autologous uh, stem cells. So it's, it's no ex outside stem cells from anywhere else. It's your own body stem cells using to, you're taking out and reintroducing to your body. Uh, along with that, uh, you rece receive chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy uh, depletes your immune system uh, to, uh, you know, to, to, to safe, zero almost, you know, just like they uh, for cancer patients. However, it's a, a different form of um, uh, chemo. Uh, I understand it's a little bit more of a low key. I don't know all the different forms of, of, of chemotherapy, but uh, once you are depleted enough, again, with blood tests, um, once you've had your stem cells out, uh, you are, you go back to the hospital and they, you get a, your stem cells injected back into your body. Um, so to hopefully, you know, get in your body, and your body's relearning it, your stem cells should theoretically rebuild your ability to fight MS. And also uh, the hope, and, and it's been shown for many patients to restore some of the ability lost uh, with MS. First, a word on the clinical release program. Uh, it was great. Yeah, Monterey, coming into Monterey, it honestly reminded me a little bit of Arlington, Virginia. Uh, I was, there was a uh, Deloitte sign on the side of a building. Uh, there was an advertisement for uh, Beer Fest. And uh, we were pulling up to the apartment building. There was a cute girl coming out getting an Uber. So it was honestly not, you know, crazy. It was not a crazy culture shock. Um, uh, as far as the, the medical program, though, um, 
they again it was top hematologists world renowned uh they participated in the international discussion and conferences and everything like that uh the program they had uh everything really taken care of every step of the way they had uh drivers um, and kind of assistance folks uh, who you interact with a lot and take you to and from um, appointments there was even a day in the beginning where we had time uh, we went on a tour of downtown Monterey and to a museum and uh, uh, it was really, you know, they were really caring and, and, and great people. Um, the apartment was brand new, a great view of Monterey. It's a big, it's a big city located in a, a valley, um, mountains all around, uh, great views. Uh, so everything in terms of uh, facilities and and people and everything else was was top-notch um, but yeah so uh, back to the procedure uh, when we first uh, we'll walk you through the how everything went when we first get there the first couple of days or actually the first day is dedicated to getting you know a battery of tests from MRI to an EKG to breathing tests and everything to make sure that you are strong enough for the procedure and are not a risk to, to yourself by going through it and you are healthy enough. Um, then uh, you spend uh, the next few days uh, uh, getting shots of filgrastrum, which uh, is medicine to uh, mobilize the stem cells into your bloodstream uh, for harvesting later. Uh, and then uh, after I believe it was a week of that, uh, we received our first dose of chemo. And after that first uh, dose of chemo, I, I had the stem cell transplant. So then after that, you get your second dose of chemo. Um, it was a little more of a lower grade, uh, as I understood it, than most cancer chemos. So um, how I felt afterwards wasn't a total knock on my butt. Uh, sort of sort of feeling um, it's mostly tolerable um, uh, and all that I did start to lose hair pretty quickly wasn't totally bald by the time I left but did have to uh, did shave my my head um, as I was losing hair in the shower and all that um, so yeah then after you have that second dose of chemo and you're getting um, regular blood level checks and all that once you get to the neutroponic level when your immune system is uh, almost flatlined, um, you go back for the stem cells to be reintroduced to your body, and then your uh, immune system is rebuilding itself with those new stem cells, um, hence the, the term stem cell, where they all, um, where everything stems from, to rebuild yourself and rebuild your ability to fight um, disease and, and all of that. Uh, you're also getting more filgrastrum shots uh, to, re again, rebuild uh, or re strengthen the stem cells going throughout your body and, uh, and all, all of that. Um, and th at this point, with neutropenia and everything, uh, you know, there is the possibility. Uh, I was with a few folks who didn't really, their bodies weren't responding as quickly, so they needed to have a blood transfusion um, just to uh, up, their, up their levels and, and strength to get back. But we eventually all did um, catch up to each other and uh, we're able to leave uh, by the end of the month um, when your body is deemed uh, safe enough and strong enough to enter out into the, the wide world. Um, so yeah, we I, I left at that point uh, back to Charleston and um, had to rebuild. They, um, you know, my hair had fallen out and I was in recovery mode and you know I had no hard liquor for several months and. Uh, they asked to, you know, I, I get into PT to start rebuilding strength to uh, hopefully um, make this remyelination or, or uh, um, you know, just regeneration uh, more doable. Uh, also during, you know, this, this time with the low immune system, they definitely encouraged avoiding large crowds and wearing masks. I, I there's a picture, uh, I'll show it here, of my of wearing a mask in the airport on the way home, so I was doing all that before it was cool <laughs> so uh but yeah there wasn't uh, i mean it was fine and uh so you know it was rebuilding for for months um and keeping in, in touch with my own doctor of course who um like i had said was on board with everything and uh keeping tabs on me and um so talking with him uh he 
uh, was at Georgetown University Hospital, uh, Dr. Carlos Mora, and he uh, had connections at the NIH, uh, the government's uh, National Institutes of Health, which is their big medical research arm. And he knew of a team um, specifically looking at uh, uh, therapies that could help rebuild uh, damage lost um, caused by multiple sclerosis. And as part of that, um, you know, the first thing it would be uh, taking a, um, uh, a spinal tap lumbar puncture to check your spinal fluid for a uh, level of, of biomarkers. So part of that, uh, partially that, and, and but mostly just knowing that team would was doing spinal taps, he hooked me up with them to, he wanted to see a year after HSCT if those biomarkers had been affected and if they were on their way out as, um, you know, the hope uh, would be with this, with this type of therapy. Uh, so unfortunately for me, they looked like they were, they were still there, locked in place. Um, so, you know, with, with all this whole therapy and every, and everything, um, I have not had the, uh, effects I was hoping for. You know, you, you see all the, the videos and you read the success stories and uh, so there are some people who are miraculously walking again after this procedure. That has not happened to me. Uh, you know, it's, I kind of see it as, as it is what it is. Um, don't, no use uh, staying down the dumps about it. Um, I think, you know, it, I haven't had a MS attack since <clears throat> 2014, and uh, so HSCT may have contributed to that. You know, I have stayed med meded up. Uh, I was off medication briefly before going to HSCT. They wanted you to stop your therapy, whatever you're on, for uh, two months before um, you go there. And uh, when you, oh yeah, when you do leave, they give you rituximab, um, which is actually what the drug Ocrevus is based on. So after I came back, just as I added security, I, uh, my doctor thought it would be a good idea to start taking Ocrevus. Um, so I've been taking Ocrevus since then. I have not had an attack, um, like I said, since 2014. Um, so it's just hard to tell exactly what multiple sclerosis is in me right now, um, other than the fact that yes, my ability has continued to depreciate and uh, I have not had those positive effects that a lot of a lot of people that we all hope for, and that a lot of people do do show. Um, you know, with all that, no hard feelings. I'm still extremely uh, happy, proud, whatever that I had the opportunity to to do HSCT. Not a lot of people uh, do. Um, you know, they have that that uh, sense of to follow through on that sense of hope, hope. it is pretty expensive uh, at the time 2018 it was a $50,000 uh, procedure uh, of course not covered by insurance being experimental and also out of country uh, so I'm not sure what it is in 2022 um, but yeah I mean so like I said overall it probably well yeah it hasn't had what I had hoped of a, of a full regrowth of uh, the damage and um, and all of that, but I I don't hold any hard feelings to it. I'm thankful for the opportunity, and you know everyone has their something, and we keep fighting on. So, uh, see, so yeah, that's that's the general overview of uh, my my time doing HSCT. I'm sure I've left some details out. Uh, I hope I haven't gotten anything wrong. Uh, if I have, uh, whoever's the authority watching this, please let me know and I'll, I'll correct it. Um, but yeah, an interesting uh, experience in my life. And I, if you are considering doing it, I'm not gonna tell you no. That's your own, I will say it was incredibly safe. Uh, looking at their data, I've just watched a presentation um, that I'll, I'll link below um, that, uh, uh, doctor, one of the doctors gave in 2020 that out of about 942 um, people who with MS that they've done this with, only two died. Uh, so everyone who goes into those has their own health issues, and they just that's just you know 
this or four to that, that number. So you don't know exactly what the context is. So but regardless, it's very safe. You don't have to fear anything there. Uh, also, I, I will say um, what I was talking about comparing this stem cell treatment, HSCT, to you might see ads on TV a lot for get this stem cell injected into your body and repair damage uh, somewhere. That type of, of stem cell treatment is still just not clinically accepted um, and it doesn't seem to, to last when it has been done. Um, you know, uh, my doctor has, has kind of the, uh, the, you know, the thought of what sense does it make to take a, a stem cell from one part of the body and put it into another just randomly. Um, so those sorts of like stem cell clinics you may hear of, I think, I think they've been really cracked down on, especially in America the last few years. Um, but most of those are, are, are bunk and un, unproven. Um, but if you see a program and are reading or read an article of specifically about HSCT or AHSCT, it's the same thing. It's just, sometimes they use A, sometimes they don't. Uh, that's the legit uh, stem cell transplant you should be paying attention to um, with a lot of um, interesting things happening. So, so yeah, that's my story. That's my experience. Like I said from the beginning, this whole thing is my experience. Uh, results may vary for everyone with this and with MS. So, uh, but I hope you, you've taken something from this and it, it's helpful and, and insightful. So thanks for listening and uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Thanks.